Good evening, good evening and welcome everybody to this special Tuesday edition of Middle Earth Reading. So we're here on Tears Day rather than Monday, so Monday being the day of the moon. Oh, one of the reasons why it's really lovely that we follow the lunar cycle, but um, yesterday I was delivering some training in London in person, which was very nice. So we are here uh, today on Tears Day. So we're following, let's call it the Starlit Path of Tear. And it's very appropriate. One of the rooms that we're going to be working with today is actually Taywaz. And we are starting a new uh, lunar cycle. So my invitation to you at this point, if you haven't already done so, is to get your runes. You might have a little rune bag like this, or you might have rune cards like this. And to just take a moment to center in your body. <sighs> just breathing in, breathing out, and just asking yourself the question, which rune wants to work with me, wants to guide with me through this coming lunar cycle? Now, for some of you, you may already have drawn a rune for working with this brand new lunar cycle. And for some of you, you might be working with a uh, rune as a spirit guide just for the day or for the week ahead or for a, a period of time as yet unknown. And that's absolutely fine. Lovely if you would share with me in the chat box, what's the, what's the rune that is most present for you at the moment, that's the most powerful for you at the moment? And I can see we've got Shannon. Hi, welcome, Shannon. We've got Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne and Trisha. And I know Maggie is away, so she has already shared her rune, which is Feyu, which is another rune that we're going to be working with this evening. And Suzanne, you've got Dargas for this new lunar cycle. Uh, it's really, we're not actually working with Dargas this evening, but I can feel some of the. We're going to work with Manas, and I can feel some little connections that are coming between the Manas rune and the Dargas rune, and what we're going to be talking about. Hi, Chen, lovely to see you. And you're going to be working with Bacano and Feyu. So interestingly, Bacano and Feyu have both, I drew both of them for this um, edition of uh, Middle Earth Readings. So for those of you who are new to Middle Earth Readings, um, we work on a on the basis of the lunar cycle. So we go through all of the runes in the Elder Futhark over the course of four sessions. There are 24 runes. So we look at, we take a deep dive, let's say, into six of them each time. And we look at how they can work with the energy of the lunar phase. So we will be looking at the, let's say the the flow of energy, the current of weird, through looking at the planetary movements for this coming week. And we're gonna be talking about the phase of the moon. And we're going to be looking at those six rooms in depth. And Pamela, you've got Tewaz, um, which we are working with. Shannon, you've got Issa, which is also your Manny's chariot rune. Lovely. It's actually um, really, intrigues me there are so many people who I do birth runes charts for they have um uh their their moon their lunar rune is Issa like a, a, a larger proportion than you would think of which is a fascinating I don't know you know what that means in terms of people who are drawn to this work but it's definitely that case it's Sue Stone hi Sue so yours is Taywaz as well and Erica you've got Thurisaz so we're not doing Thurisaz tonight but let's see if anything comes up around Thurisaz as well so for those of you who um, are maybe following with me for the first cycle, this is a great opportunity if you are not, if you don't already have your Sooner Starwheel membership, this is a really lovely time to join Sooner Starwheel. So Sooner Starwheel is like the, the, the background personal work accompaniment to Middle Earth readings. It is um, £45 for a full year of Sooner Starwheel editions. So it will be going out, um, I think tomorrow morning, I'm planning to get it out for you so that it is ready for the new moon on the 21st. And you get, you will get your whole month ahead, all of the planetary movements coming for the month ahead with their explanations as to what they mean. You will get an audio guide from me about those planetary movements, a little bit deeper looking at um, the, the month that we're looking at the Anglo-Saxon month of Three Milky. We're going to be talking a little bit about that. And you get a soul care meditation, which supports you in integrating and working with the energies for the coming lunar cycle. So that is available now. I'll put it in the chat box later, but it's a really beautiful accompaniment to Middle Earth readings and a lovely way to deepen into your own practice of runic astrology, of sacred play, of working with your, your runes and working through the lunar cycle. So I really recommend that if you don't already have Sooner's Star Wheel. Um, 
candies you're saying you're working with um, manners and that's lovely that's actually the first rune that i drew for um for this evening and pamela is saying that your rune is also taylor so that's great there's so many people are coming and with the runes that i've drawn are for are for this evening so the overall theme for this coming month because we are in the month of um of three milky monarch as it is known and it is known as that because it is said that our, our ancestors worked out that they could milk the cattle three times a day during this time so it's a time of abundance and plenty and this is our theme our theme of, of abundance is what's coming through this full cycle and that is the theme of the soul care meditation in sooner star wheel for example to really deepen into that and open into um abundance and this coming week we are looking at um, risk and reward now what is it that we might need to risk in order to open ourselves more fully into abundance is the question that is being um posed through the course of this week and this recognition that sometimes we have to take risks in order to receive those the fullest rewards you know? so this is this is the the theme that we are working on and this is working with our two planetary movements that we're going to be looking at this week and there's a little bit of an undercurrent of um, Odin's chariot. At the very end of the week, Odin's chariot is going to move into retrograde. Uh, so Odin is, you might think about him as going like on retreat. So there is a very strong energy of abundance coming through. But at the same time, there is this underlying question of what do we sacrifice in order to bring more of what we hold sacred into our lives you think about the meaning of sacrifice to make sacred it's almost that you know what do we have to say no to in order to say a bigger yes to what we really want so when odin um at this point with he's going he's in lagos and he's going down into lagos he'll actually move i think back into manners during his retrograde period and then come back out into lagos again he is recognizing this point where even a sovereign even the great all father himself seeks um, guidance seeks counsel says i am emptying myself of all uh, expectation of all um desire of all driving force for this period of time when i go into retreat and the this period of retrograde is preempted by a really interesting um, planetary cycle when we have the new moon. So the new moon on the 21st will be in Manas. Manas, the, the rune of sovereignty, the rune of the divine, the rune of um, Odin upon the throne. You know, at this point, he is upon the throne, but he is preparing to go down into the depths and perhaps to recognize that the greatest sovereigns know what they don't know. So here we've got our manners rune that we're going to be working with with the new moon um so odin is preparing to take this journey to open himself and to empty himself so that he can then fill with more wisdom from the deep so that he can claim the abundance that he desires which is the abundance of wisdom that's what he is looking for um, as he goes down in and um, before that we have the new moon in manas as i say so the moon is also emptied at this point it is emptied of the energy of weird for those of you who know some of the tales of of many um the the moon is said to be made of the waters of weird in some tellings in in others it's made of uh, the of muspelheim it's made of the the energy of fire and flame but for some it's made as, as seen as the waters of weird and it is fully you know it's emptying right down to its last dregs at the dark moon ready to be filled anew there is a sense of emptying and at the, the same time just ahead in fact just ahead of the of the new moon we have um uh, a solar eclipse not one that's going to be visible from the northern hemisphere but it's worth bearing in mind that we've got that as well in the southern hemisphere it will be more more visible the sense of the sun itself almost sort of emptying as well and you can see within the manners there's a sort of union of the sun and the moon who are seen as brother and sister 
in the northern tradition with the 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 moon at its darkest phase just you know just preparing to become new again and the sun with the solar eclipse and then odin just ready to take his descent so this real question around um what are we prepared to risk what are we prepared to let go of that comes through which is where this risk and reward piece comes through and we're going to remember that with the manas rune how do we step more fully into sovereignty by um releasing and by opening to courage opening to you know what are the risks that we might take so before we look at the other planetary movements i want to share with you two stories so i've mentioned uh, manny i've mentioned that we're at the time of the new moon we're at this time of intention setting we can think of um, the moon as being uh, a witness you know he is a a witness to our our struggles to our work to our trials to our tribulation he sees us and so we can offer our intentions to him you can get your your drinking horn or your lovely cup or whatever it is that you want to use and you can speak your intentions aloud for those of you who are on awaken with me or on the mastery program or in some of my other programs if you're on the, any of the dream wheel events um, normally at the end of those dream wheel retreats we do a symbol right and we witness each other we witness each other's intention setting but if you are alone the moon is always your witness even in his darkest phase and as he comes into new when we voice those intentions and we say okay, i'm working with my rune that i have chosen and I am voicing my intentions aloud to him as the energy of the moon fills back up again as it moves towards full and particularly in this month of three milky. Um, the energy of weird flows in to support us in those intentions. So that's why it's a really powerful time to set intentions and why it's particularly powerful this time. Now, Manny, as our as our witness, you know, he he is a what's the word he's an adventurer he's very he's deeply compassionate loving god you know who is guarding and taking care of the moon and he's said to sometimes sort of go off course because he's so interested in what's happening oh you know what's going on over there and in some of the tellings the wolf that chases the moon isn't there to sort of devour it although it does devour it in the end its actual primary role is to keep him on track because otherwise he'd divert off but there was one time, there was a single time, or at least a single time that we know of, when Manny decided that the risk of going off course, of perhaps moving outside of his own purpose, the purpose that he had been set by the gods to bring the moon, the chariot of the moon along, um, needed to be put to one side for long enough to him to go down and rescue two children in need in the human world. And, and they go on to um, support him in creating the phases of the moon as well and working with him. So they become his collaborators in some way. But this idea that he takes a, a, a risk, perhaps a risk that the wolf will you know, devour the moon as he goes off course. He takes it because he feels that it's the right thing to do. And for those of you who have Tewas as your rune, that's going to be an important part of this um, intention setting piece is integrity, your integrity, your truth. So we're going to be working with the Tewas rune this evening. So you can start to feel into that at this point. What would it make you move off the course that was, even if it was the one that you, you sort of knew, yeah, this is the right path for me. This is the right way. Here's our Tewas rune here. For those of you who are working with Tewas, um, I'm just going to drop everything because I absolutely know that this is the right thing to do. Perhaps if you're a quiet person, maybe if you're an introverted person, now I'm an introverted person, what would make you stand up and be counted? You know, when I started Middle Earth readings, I was absolutely petrified the first time I, I did it. You know, I was like, oh, you know, um, how is this going to work out? But what I realized is that my purpose in bringing the runes, bringing the runes as a living energy that other people could access and work with overrode my fear. You know, it overrode my fear. I, I did it anyway. And so there are times when a cause, a, a, a value, a truth, is so strong that it helps us to overcome everything else and we find our abundance we find our plenty from that place and this is the, the story of money 
you know, in this point, that's the way that I see it, at least. You know, maybe you could argue, well, that, you know, fate wanted him to have two helpers. But I, I like to think that he was just like, no, I have witnessed too much suffering on this world. I will not endure it. I will save at least two of these souls who I am here to to witness and support. I, I, I don't want that distance. I don't want that separation. So we have this energy coming through with the new moon, this sense in which Manny in his sovereign power with the Manaz rune, in his truth with the Tewaz rune, chose a path that might have seemed off course, but it was right, it was right for him. And then we have on the 20th, the other major movement is we're moving into Scardi's Hall, the Hall of Scardi. Can't believe we're already at that point. My um, my birthday comes in Scardi's Hall. So Scardi's um, Hall spans the equivalent period of time of as the sign of the zodiac of Taurus. So if you're a Taurian, um, then Scardi can be called upon as a as a patron. And she is a she's a fabulous goddess, a really fabulous goddess. She was actually originally a Yotun, a, a giantess, and her father is is slain by the gods. You know, it might have not been intended, but it happens. And you know, the, the gods are the enemies of the Yotun and all of their stuff is, is there to stop the Yotun, stop the giants from getting in to Asgard. And uh, you know, it all everything's wrapped against her, but Skadi, she's not having it. They killed my dad. No, is what she's thinking. And not only is she brave and fearless, she's also clever. And so she knows that the gods, like um, men at that time, at the time of the, uh, the Vikings, of the Anglo-Saxons, were bound by laws. Uh, they were bound by laws that meant that they, they were required to offer recompense to those who, where they had slain a family member. So this was something, this was a human law as well, um, often called um, Wehrgild, the giving of, of, of gold, actually, as a recompense for the taking of a life. No, so life was seen to be valuable in that way. You know, how can peace be reforged so that we don't end up in conflict with each other is what was being looked at here. So Skadi knew this and she knew that she was bound by this. So she felt like, yeah, she's a giantess, she's on her own, she marches over that rainbow bridge right to the gods and she said, you killed my dad, you owe me. You know? And they're like, whoa. I'm like, a, this is a little bit frightening that a giantess has just you know, wandered in here with all of us, she should be frightened, frightened, she's not. Be that she knows our laws so well and see that she's demanding that. And and she actually strikes an alliance and she gets quite a good deal out of it. And she becomes a member of the Aesir. She becomes a member of them. And so there is this sense of the risk that she takes and the reward that she receives, you know, that comes through. So Skadi is a great, patron to work with to help us to step into our courage to step into our fearless magic at this time Erica saying I'm so happy you overcame your fear and kept following your runes calling I am too Erica oh yeah this is my my favorite way to spend my time Ah, oh, thank you. And Karen, hi Karen. I see you can't stay very long. That's fine to catch us on replay. And you've got your rune is also Thurisaz. We've got a couple of Thurisaz people. You've heard a little bit of a presence of Thurisaz when I've talked about the wolf who chases the moon. That might be something to meditate on a little bit more. That sense in which, um, hmm, sometimes we can be misunderstood in our intentions, but we do it anyway. Now we don't, the the walls are often seen as villains, the, the, the walls who chase the sun and the moon, but there are these indicators that perhaps they are the bringers of balance. They are the shadow of the light, the necessary balance of the light. They are the ones who keep the moon and the sun on course in some tellings as well. So there is this sense of, sometimes we can have fear about what other people will think of us or the way that we might be judged or how far what we're doing will be seen to be out of character or, or different and therefore might jar on people and they you know that's not I don't remember, this is not like you in some way and it's saying am I going to do it anyway and through this month there is a really strong call to say yes I'm going to do it anyway 
So we have looked at the uh, Manas rune. We've looked a little bit at the the Tewaz rune. We're going to come back to that one. Is there anything else that Manas wants to say? I don't think so at this point. I think that really that balance of um, sovereignty and service and that idea of what is it that we sacrifice and does it actually feel like a sacrifice when we get something so much better in return? What are those leaps of faith that can be taken is what comes through with the Manaz rune. Um, with the Tewaz rune, I mentioned truth, I mentioned integrity. Um, we were talking about the sort of energy of the arrow what are talking about this in? Oh, no, I did a, a, a workshopping masterclass with my mastery students yesterday, which was just fabulous. It was brilliant. We were talking about some of the much lesser known runes that were used in the runic calendars and we were exploring them and we were talking about the Tewaz rune. I think it was you, Suzanne, who brought in this image of um, the, uh, the, the bow being drawn back and then the time when you need to let the arrow take flight. And this is very much the, the Tewaz rune. It's that sense of maybe the risk is letting go maybe the risk is saying i can no longer i'm no longer in control of this i have to go where this takes me i have to trust the m momentum that i have created in this moment is what come is what is coming through with the Tewaz rune so we also have i'm just flicking through my runes here the feyu runes the feyu rune came up quite quickly after the Manaz rune and said, yes, you know, this is my time for energy, which makes sense for me. If we think about um, Three Milky, I think very much in this um, month of abundance and of milk, of the role of um, cattle. So if the Feyu rune is a one of its associations, is the Feyu rune there. The first rune in the Elder Futhark is with Audhumla. So Audhumla is actually, she's the first being, but she's sort of like this primal being, this nurturing force who her, her name one of the, the one of the meanings for her name is sort of um is like hornless hornless giver so she's this horn, hornless cattle here that is giving of her abundance and so really that energy of abundance comes through with her and this flow of the feyu rune and there is a caution here that I think is important with the Feyu rune at this point. So we can really, sometimes we can go, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, with the Manaz rune, we were talking about balance. We were talking about that need for balance. So many of us who practice uh, magic, you know, we can get really into the, the act of magic. You know, the, I'm gonna cast the spell, I'm gonna go around the circle, I'm going to create the energy, it's gonna be fabulous, and it's gonna be wonderful. And we don't then do the, the practical bit. We don't do the, where does the magic, where does this moment of raising energy towards an aim, and then letting fly with the Tewaz rune, where does that come in a sequence of events that needs to happen in terms of me thinking about what is the uh, the purpose of what it is that I'm doing? Does it align to my values? What needs to be put in place for that to happen? What practically do I need to do? Um, what, uh, let's say, like, what caveats, what safety protocols do I need to put in place? So those of you, you know, if you're, you're skilled in magic, you will know that sense of saying, um, if you're Wiccan, you know, it, it should harm none. No, and and then then let the magic come forward. It's all of the the skill that comes with manifestation. When we look at, let's say you want a new job. Now it's all very well doing some lovely magics and things like that, but make sure that you're not saying I want this. I want you know um, this fabulous job without saying, but I don't want to take it from somebody else who who, who needs. It. I don't want harm to happen to to somebody else for that to for, for my will to move forward and um as well as that you know yes i've done it where's the job where's the job well what applications are you doing in order to allow that magic to channel through you know you, there are practical things that need to be done as well and the failure room brings this in it's asking us to think about responsibility and this is important if we think about again the energy of old humla and abundance but we've also been thinking about the wolf um it came up with the thurisaz room we've talked about it with the tewaz room we've talked about it with um manny and the wolves that are chasing the chariots of the moon. In the Feyurun poems, we, they, they talk about the energy of the wolf, the wolf that is lurking in the forest. And the wolf that is lurking in the forest is, um, is greed, is desire, is lack, is poverty, 
is is danger and is in a very tangible and practical sense is the person who you know, within northern european society broke the rules so badly that they were essentially sort of excommunicated exiled from their clan they are no longer under the protection of the clan the the rules such as the rules of weregild no do not apply to them anymore um, it others are free to kill them if they want you know no where guild will apply they can steal from them because they are outside of the law is the way that they're seen and so they become the hungry wolf and so this is cancelling on two fronts first of all it is saying if you do not follow the rules of whatever context you're working within um, you could end up being that lost wolf in the forest you know uh, follow your values follow the, the 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 follow your moral compass so it's that balance you know it's that moment when manny said uh, i'm going to go down there and he weighed up that risk you know, we don't know when, what threat went through his mind whether he was aware of any negative consequences that could come about through him going off course so badly you know but he but he weighed them up and he knew them and he decided to take that risk the same with tear no I, I want to do this tear is different to some of the other sort of martial gods in other pantheons in that he is also a king and a priest so he does not take um frenzied action you might get that with the berserker and the thurisas rune but with the tewas rune there is a decision making process that happens first and so Faye was asking us to think about that um i'll go into this a little bit more in the sooner star wheel um missive where i'm talking a little bit more about um abundance and about the the way in which humanity has evolved our relationship with cattle and what that might mean but for the for us at this point it is saying yes i want that abundance but where are the where are my edges where are my boundaries what am i not prepared what am i not prepared to sacrifice it's the the, the reverse of the what am i prepared to sacrifice is what am i not prepared to sacrifice and making those channels really clear okay so the next rune wants to peep out from come and speak to us is the urus rune so the fey rune is the first rune in the elder futhark and the urus rune came up um second um uh, is apologies didn't come up second it is the second rune in the elder futhark and it wanted to come and play with us and say yes this i'm here for intention setting which is lovely because the urus rune is again you know i mentioned the symbol right wonderful for um, holding us to oaths for that creation of oaths, for creating the form of oaths. It very much relates to the idea of, of natural law, of that which must be. There is a little counsel there to say, don't set intentions that are going to be impossible for you to keep or even improbable for you to keep. Set intentions that aren't like so easy, you know, like falling off a log. I would say to people when they do the symbol, right? You know, don't do a, you know, I promise to get out of bed tomorrow, tomorrow morning, you know, unless you haven't got out of bed for the last two months. You know, it's got to be something that is a little bit stretching, but you don't want it to be impossible. You know, maybe we slightly differ in our in our society um, today, in that uh, traditionally symbol rights were taken, and there was quite a lot of drinking involved, and um, perhaps the, the 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 promises that were made during the symbol right became more and more elaborate and more and more yes i will do this as time went on which is maybe what was needed for our ancestors the type of risks that they were taking were i'm going to get out in a boat on water and go in a direction towards land that i hope is there you know maybe you needed to be quite drunk in order to make that oath in the first place and this is why then the Uru's rune, the strength of the Uru's rune and the witnessing of the tribe then holds you to it. Now, you said you were going to do it. You've got to do it. Otherwise, maybe you'll end up as the wolf in the forest. And there's this honour and the luck bringing that comes in. Now, we are in a slightly different position. Not many of us are going to need to offer ourselves to such huge risks but think about that in that context. What sort of risk feels like it is achievable to me so that I can build my luck? You know, that's what, you know, the, the, the warriors who came back 
the adventurers who came back on their ships were were heroes. You know, they were sung about songs generation after generation. You know, maybe we maybe you don't have as as an intention that you're going to be sung about in like three generations' time for having gone and you know plundered a far off land that you didn't even know was there. You know, but what are the intentions that you want to set? And the Uru's rune holds us to that. It brings us the strength, the courage to move forward. It's also can be associated with the moon, like the um, horns of the aurochs there, which is what the Uru's rune represents. It represents the mighty aurochs. It echoes a little bit of that Feu rune cancelling as well, bearing in mind that the aurochs is um, extinct. And it tells us that whereas for our ancestors, the greatest challenge was surviving their personal survival. You know, we need um, food, we need land, we need resource. For us in this day, there are different challenges. Our challenges are perhaps around the survival of our species or the survival of other species or the way in which how do we balance our natures, our desire, our curiosity, our adventure, our appetite with the resources, with the sustainability has become the horizon of our people, uh, which is a very different challenge, requiring a different approach. And it's one of the reasons why I believe that the Northern tradition, that this resurgence of this um, wealth of, um, of wisdom, this wellspring of wisdom from the Northern peoples, from the Northern ancestors and this land has come through at this time, is to offer that spiritual intelligence, that spiritual compass for us as we chart new horizons towards a future where hopefully you know we are coexisting in our planet in a much more harmonious much more sustainable way bringing out the best in each other and yeah operating in a sustainable ecosystem that's enough of me um talking about my vision that comes through so strongly whenever the uru's rune um calls but I do feel as if the Uru's Rune, that is perhaps some of what the Uru's Rune wants for those of you who've drawn the Uru's Rune for this month, is perhaps that sense of what are the small things that I can do that impact the bigger picture? You know, that it will be everybody making small changes in their lives that bring incremental change. Yes, we need governments to do like, the, the, the big changes too, but each of us has that ability as well. Um, to to make those changes and to open ourselves to that to the spiritual intelligence of the earth, you know, at this point. So perhaps that's a little bit of what Uruz is asking for at this time, which brings us very nicely on to our final two runes of this evening. So we're going to be looking at Bacano and Ingus. They are they're quite complementary runes. I was quite pleased when they decided that they were going to come through um, together this evening. So the Bacano rune comes immediately after the Tewaz rune. So um, Tewaz, uh, Manaz, Bacano, Ingus are all in the third eight. Interesting, you're looking at the runes, we don't have any runes for this new rune intention setting in the second eight, which is the challenger set. So they're going to come out later in the month. And perhaps that's because we're in this place of emptying. You know? I'm emptying, I'm releasing, I'm in the place of the dark moon, I'm in the place of the... What is it that I need? I'm following Odin you know, down into the depths, um, releasing. And we're not in the time of testing at this point. We're in the time of letting go and allowing what needs to come in to come through. So the Bacano rune and the Ingus rune are both in the, um, the third eight. So we have Tewaz and then we have Bacano immediately after. So Tewaz often represents like the divine masculine force, the mature divine masculine. Bacano representing the mature divine feminine. It's also the rune of spring. Um, it's uh, half month is a, uh, the spring equinox is bang in the center of the Bacano rune. So it's very present this time of abundance of the earth offering its abundance. And to me, it's saying, you know, when you are looking at these, the deeds, when you're looking at these deeds that you want to achieve at what you want to bring forth through the course of the month, don't forget that nature has your back, that the earth is there supporting, just as the Uru's rune was calling us into saying, what action can you take? The Bacano rune then comes in and says, and don't forget that if you are working for me, you know, it reminds me of the, the little book, Planet Earth is Hiring. Great book, really, really love it. Um, if you are working for me and I am your employer, 
then I am going to be looking after you. You know, so there is a real sense of being in relationship with the earth, being in relationship with the natural world. There is an echo of that Orthumla energy of the Feyu rune, but it is more What's the word I'm looking for? Because it's the mature feminine. Feyu is, you know, Orthumla is in many ways, there is an innocence about Orthumla. We are told that she indiscriminately feeds all things. You know, she, she feeds all things um, regardless. The Bacano rune comes later and there is a sense of the all of the aspects of the divine feminine. No, there is that that mothering part definitely within the Bacano rune, but there's also the the warrioress in there and the sorceress in there. These archetypal energies of the divine feminine coming through, and saying when you think that you don't have the resources available to you, that is when you call on me. That is when you connect in with the earth. When you feel your roots. When you draw up those energies which some of us might think of them as being spiritual energies calling on the the specific energies of a god or goddess if we work with one or you might think about them as archetypal energies some of you know that i, I work in my 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 one-to-one -one coaching and also through the dream real work we do some work on on archetypes and on bringing through these archetypal energies and and bringing them into our leadership bringing them into our our, our presence you know, in this time so what is needed right now i am not alone and so the Bacana rune is offering nurturing for your power through the course of this month um yeah it may feel fresh it may feel new it may feel vulnerable even the vulnerable shoots coming through in the spring but every each individual vulnerable shoot on its own is fragile but all of the vulnerable shoots across all of the earth are not fragile you know, it's a reminder for humanity. You think that you are saving the earth. The earth will survive, but you may not. And by the way, I don't want you dragging down a whole load of species with you. I'm back on my soapbox again, sorry. <laughs> but there is this sense of when you are on my side, I am on your side, coming through quite strongly with the Bacano rune um, this month. And then finally, we have the Ingus rune, which I meant said that the Bacano rune was the... Um, the divine feminine, the mature divine feminine. So then the divine masculine comes up again. In the in all of the third eight, there is a real blending of energies, a bringing together. And so after the Tewas rune and the Bacano rune, we have other pairings. And one of those pairings is Lagus, which is another emanation of the divine feminine, a more mystical, more, let's say, more sorceress, more wisdom, more the wisdom that's underneath. Bacano is up there on the surface, you know, on the top of the earth. Lagus is down there in the waters. And then we have Tewas, the arrow flying through the sky. And we have the mystical masculine force of the seed beneath the earth waiting to come up, waiting for this um, great abundance to come through. And so I, as I started by talking about the idea of sacrifice, about the idea of stepping into the unknown. This rune can really represent that. It can represent the journey that the, the again, that the, the, the mature divine masculine takes, bearing in mind all of us have access to the feminine and the masculine. This is not about male and female. Um, into the earth, like um, John Barleycorn being sacrificed, going down into the earth, um, releasing everything and being reborn within the earth there is a fearlessness that comes with that it's almost like you can almost see this as being like odin's eye when he goes down into the depths and he sacrifices his eye and he leaves it there and then he comes up and he's changed he's transformed he's like the all father that we know now with the one one eye he becomes known as one eye but he is so much more powerful in that moment so it is a the sense of which when we take these these risks, when we take our mini risks, when we play that little bit, when we go outside of our comfort zone, when we allow ourselves to move into spaces where we might feel um, conflict or disharmony or, you know, people are looking at us slightly differently because we're stepping up for something and we haven't done that before, you know, whatever it is, 
this is a real opportunity for rebirth, a real opportunity for transformation when we seize it, when we let go and when we trust, you know, the divine masculine moving into the, the, the womb of the dark mother is often what the Ingu seed represents. And we find in that space those reserves of energy that we didn't even know that we had. And so through the course of this lunar cycle for those of you with the with the ingus rune it's often called um ingus or ingwas sometimes it has the little spokes above and below so it looks more like a little dna helix there is perhaps a call to to patience and a trust and perhaps a, a not knowing on a like a, a word level not being able to articulate what it is that you are feeling no Odin, who is the word smith par excellence, is descending into the realm that is pre-words, very primal realm, in order to bring up new wisdom. You know, echoing that journey that he takes down into the depths and he brings the runes back up. It's almost that um, if I let go fully, including letting go the need to explain, to know why, to know what, all of those things, if I let go fully, when I emerge, there will be so much more than I can imagine at this point is what the Ingu's rune represents. That's actually perhaps a really useful point for me to also mention um, that on Monday next week, Monday evening next week, I am opening the retreat that is centered around the Beltane energy uh, beyond the veils. This is a dream wheel retreat called Beyond the Veils. And it is about taking that journey um, inwards, taking that journey into ancestral wisdom, into past life wisdom, you know, literally traveling into the places of the unknown to, in a, in a northern tradition sense, it's a form of power retrieval. It's like the retrieval of story, the retrieval of personal story and power story um, in order to rebirth um, anew through that time. So if you are interested in that, um, look on the website under programs and events. You can sign up immediately there. I will pop something in. It's going to be on the Hearth Space group. I'll put the events in there so you can sign up that way. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. It's very, um, yes, it's forming very nicely now. Um, Beyond the Veils is our next retreat. So yeah, opportunities there. If you're feeling a little bit into the, the lunar cycle, Soon as Star Wheel is available, it will be coming out for the coming month um, tomorrow, ready for the new moon. And we have our, our Beltane Retreat Beyond the Veils coming up as well. With that, thank you so much to all of you who have joined me on this day at this um, different time for Middle Earth readings. It has been lovely to see you all. Just having a little look. Uh, what people have said. So this is an interesting fame and in tables and Picardo. I thought it was really interesting because they're drawing the runes and they just came through that way. Candice is saying so much balance. I loved it. Sue is saying as always many wisdoms. It's wonderful. Um, M Maggie, about tables, you mentioned it briefly, but I can't recall its potency is present. Its potency definitely is present. And yes, I talked about it in terms of the, the arrow and the integrity. So Probably with the Taywaz rune, it came up a few times through the course of, of this session rather than having a, this is the Taywaz moment. So you might want to have another little listen, Pamela, there for what is present for you in around um, Taywaz. Um, yeah, I think that that's, I'm feeling that we're in a good place here. So thank you to everybody. I will see you all very soon. I look forward to seeing um, people from Mastery tomorrow evening when we have our Mastery Circle. Uh, we have the Hearth Space for um, our meditation and embodiment session, uh, which I'm really looking forward to on Friday. And we have the Dream Wheel uh, Retreat starting on Monday. So I will see you for Middle Earth readings just ahead of that at our normal time, again, resuming next Monday. Take care, everybody. Blessings to you all. Speak to you very soon.